Hello everyone and welcome to another part of Let's Play Europa Universalis Free Divine Vent with Mayo Mode where we're playing the administrative kingdom of Malay if I'm not mistaken. No I'm not. So yeah, last time we dedicated a whole lot of money from our budget to increase uh, the fourth levels which should be... yeah... All of our borders are now up to level 3. And uh, right now we are trying to increase our stability back to what it was before. And after that we're gonna go for the land because we need the North African Musketeers. At least I think that was the plan from the last time. Well, seems budget to me so I'm gonna stick with it because I can remember um, thinking about something else. In the meantime, we will continue the colonization as uh, was announced last time. Oh, and I can see Kankan needs a level uh, 3 fort. No, Manes. Kankan is this one and that has almost no fort at all, so we're gonna have to deal with that. However, we are currently colonizing Fanta. After that, it's uh, Ani. And after that, it's Guru. And Vordugu is gonna be the last one. Okay, seems good. Then this and this, and we're done. Should be a couple more years. And after that, we are ready. Okay, we just got two events uh, in a row. One, you know, it's Benign and Neglect, uh, which grants us 500 gold. Which is awesome, because the other one is Military Development, which either costs us 250 gold and keeps our quality the same, uh, as we have maximum quality troops, or we lose one in quality. Which we just did! Did I click? I must have clicked. Uh, mm. Well, anyways, uh, so we lost one quality, but that's not such a bad thing to happen. Uh, meanwhile, Fanta is now producing slaves, which is an awesome thing for us, as we need to improve our trade value. And Aravan, I believe, had... Uh, changed... wait, where is Aravan? Ah, uh, wrong button. Ara... one. Yeah, Aravan has switched to palm oil, which skyrocketed its production. So, that's pretty good. Mm, the money we gained will Probably used to improve the fort in Kankan, and uh, we might want to improve this one as well. Though that's really expensive, and we don't have enough gold for that, so we have to uh, lower our investment. Still deficits. Well, not anymore. What's our inflation? Okay, we can keep it like this for the time being. I'm um, continuing to colonize uh, Fanta, as I said before. And I decided to switch it to crew. Uh, so, not Aine next, but crew. Then Aine. An Ane, not Aine. Ane, crew, Ane, and Vordugu. Hmm. Meanwhile, meanwhile, I've been watching the situation in Northern Africa, hoping to gain a piece of Fez, uh, and... Uh, oh cool, we gain Corn Kankan. We might have to go to war with a lot of nation if that is our plan. Or we might want to uh, gain, I don't know, Tlantzen or... Tonsen is actually what... yeah, it's a nation as well. Or Tugurt, which uh, might not be 
so bad they produce uh, iron. We're allied with both. Could we offer them a transition? Yes, but it's very unlikely. But that might be the best uh, possibility to go with. But we need to lower our infamy for that. They won't accept at this uh, moment. And I can blame them. We don't have the best prestige and uh, nor, nor popularity in the world. So. Well, that's how high diplomacy works. Conquering them would be very easy, but it would give us uh, unnecessary infamy. 8. 16 for just 3 provinces, which is insane. It's 5th of April 1595, and we just research land technology level 26, which gives us no bonus at all, however brings us a step closer to land technology 27, which will give us North African Musketeers, Pedrero, and increase our land morale by plus 50. At that point, attacking Kanemburnu will become extremely easy, and we even have a Casus Belli on them. So I figured out maybe it is a good time to do that. Uh, maybe that's uh, how we should do it. We will be able to take Fez, uh, or at least I believe we will. Yeah, they have a 123, so we might uh, be able to deal with them semi-easily. On the other hand, Kanemborne will be a piece of cake. The only problem I see with this is that uh, we have an extremely high infamy and I'm not sure if we would be able to gain any territory from that. We will probably be able to get something from Fez but it's the same problem well, with Fez. Oh cool! With Fez it's uh, even worse because he w we would get 50% uh, off to get free provinces which is 12.6 yeah, we couldn't get that at this point. That sucks. Hmm. Okay, Fanta needs a level 2 fort. So that's a must have. And we might want to invest. Yeah, we can. So that's good news actually. Regimental camp. No. A dock in Ava seems like a good idea. And the town hall in Gano. They not build it? This game confuses me sometimes. No, obviously I did not, so... Let's do it again, and now we have deficits. But not serious, only so light. Cool, that's done. There we go, we improve our economy and defenses. Uh, I tried to somehow persuade Twansam to uh, vassalize, but they refused again and again, so that's uh, a no go for the time being. But we still might be able to do it, it's uh, only unlikely. Uh, as you can see, we finished colonization of Fanta and now continue with the colonization of Crew. We exterminated the entire local populace and uh, sent three colonists already, so it might take uh, around two to three years to colonize the rest of the territory. But then we're off to uh, Ani and then Vordugu, as was planned before. Hmm. I um, have to think about the situation of Canem Bornem, except for the infamy, everything seems to be, you know, in favor of that. And we haven't grown in the military area for some time. I believe we have uh, Turunku, Zazal and Zamfara, so that's uh, Zamfara, Zazal and Turunku. 
these three. And they are quite rich, especially Zaza, which produces ivory. Zamfara and Turunku will take more uh, time to be profitable, but Zaza, uh, it's enough. Uh, the production itself, it's enough. So we might go with just the one, which would help our border situation and probable reparations from them. Stuff like that. Here we might want to conquer Tania, which sucks production wise, but would be really useful as a uh, control point. Too bad there's no longer um, what's it called? Uh, the passage? Uh, straight. Narrow straight. Which is weird. I remember there that, it, that there was one but uh, in the end they removed it. I guess it was too easy to uh, get into North Africa, Spain, or vice versa, if you were playing African nation. <laughs> I just found out a curious thing. The production costs only 2388 to advance. So, what the hell? <laughs> I immediately uh, started investing into that because uh, it's gonna give me a 2% boost in production which is kinda a lot and uh, we'll see how how much better this one gets uh, I would like to get back to uh, the land technology soon but it seems that we have fallen behind so much in production that actually the game is giving it uh, to me for free okay here we go production technology advance of 18 which increases our production efficiency by 2%. Now let's see how much better it is. It's even cheaper. Uh, damn, this is a tricky situation. How long until we'll be done with the land? Two more years. Damn it, damn it, damn it. I would go for the production immediately, but the problem I'm facing is that uh, we really need to up our military. So far, we still have, uh, you know, we still don't use guns. We use bows, and uh, I know that uh, the production would help us a lot, but military is still our primary achievement and primary goal so yeah I'll have to stick with that for the moment but immediately after we're done uh, we will move back to uh, back to naval that back sorry uh, back to production and then to naval because uh, I think that the same thing will go for naval and trade so we'll check naval then trade and see how expensive it is. And this is really incredible. I've never had the technology cheap, uh, that cheap before. Mm. Yeah, we can send the colonist. We have the money. So just for more. Well, we have a situation. Nobles demand increased pensions. Uh, kings had to keep their unruly nobles in line through many methods. One of the most common was cold hard cash. Nobles would demand uh, nobles would oh nobles would demand increased pensions in exchange for relinquishing certain rights to the king. So either we give them a lot of money, or we lose some stability. And uh, what's better, tax? That's 120 per year and it's for 20 years. Or stability, which is 2903. I'm sure it would be better to accept their demands, but 
I refuse. I refuse and I'm happy about it. So now let's deal with the stability issues and then we'll head back to researching land. It's 31st of January 1598 and Exactly a month ago we reclaimed the stability and we are on our way back to uh, finish the land technology of 27. And it seems uh, that unless something unpredictable happens, we will enter uh, the 17th century with guns. Uh, if something happens, well then we'll <laughs> we'll have guns on the beginning of the 17th century. What could happen worse? And uh, just one more colonist and crew will become a complete province. Yay! Cheesecake or something. We should celebrate. But we'll celebrate more when we get these two. Starting to look complete. Actually, it looks like a hungry, hungry fish. You know, here's the mouth. Mouth. Uh, here's an eye. This is the tail. And it's just going down. And jump from the sea and going down to the sea. Okay, that's enough of my wild imagination. I uh, forget that happened, and uh, I'll be back with some more news soon. Well there, agricultural revolution, which will raise base tax by one in Zinder. And we got some revolts in the meantime uh, in Magnus, uh, which is quite okay. And that was all it seems like. Oh, so the other one was a message about the siege. But yeah, we got uh, agricultural revolution in Zinder which increases its value to 4. Well, that's uh, better than nothing, I guess. Uh, interestingly enough, by the way, if we increase uh, the investment to the maximum, so we would mint nothing and all went uh, to the research, you will notice that we are losing around 60 gold per year, so our economy is actually uh, unstable and uh, it's impossible to have it that way which is a huge problem for us we need to increase our economy soon so that's why I'm gonna go with the production technology but the main problem cannot be fixed uh, because this is just uh, increasing the money we have uh, in the turnaround what we need is to increase our uh, yearly income, but that one is uh, a bit complicated. We need cores and more provinces for that, which will take a lot of time. The main problem of uh, what we're facing is that our army has grown too huge, so I need to increase uh, the land for some its modifier, which I'm increasing with every province I get, that's true. Uh, Though I'm not increasing the, um, the overall income, the year by one. But still, we're in a bad situation. This is this is a sign of uh, unhealthy economy. So I have to deal with that uh, sooner or later, which makes me sad. We might actually be okay if we manage to. Uh, built some uh, town halls. Okay, I had a little crash there. Uh, Fraps obviously don't like mayo, and I have no idea what I was talking about, which will look funny in the video, I'm sure. So yeah, um, I think I was talking something about the economy being unhealthy or something like that. Anyways, uh, we have to stop fortifying crew as it has became a full-fledged province producing millet. Yay. 
So let's take this down so we don't take uh, an unwanted loan. And it's up to Ani now. Cool. Anyways, we made a deal that we're gonna end uh, at January 700, 1700. Uh, so that should be enough for us to enter the new time with guns and more happy than ever before. Okay, our army is ready to murder everything that has two legs in Ane and they will start with it right about in three days tomorrow yep for every 10 of us 500 of them die so what a happy happy moment anyways the really important thing is that we increased our chances uh, to something I'm not sure how much uh, we'll see that soon when January arrives. I think it should be something like 99%. Uh, that was probably the chance before. It's being recalculated every uh, every month. Here it is, Land Technology Advanced Level 27, which increases our land morale by a lot enables North African Musketeers and Pedrero. So let's have a look at that. Now here. How big a difference is that? Well, actually not that much, but well it's uh, plus one in both defensive and offensive morale. It's uh, minus one in offensive shock, but plus one in defensive shock, and it's plus one in defensive and offensive fire. And it says African warriors from the north armed with muskets and possessing superior defensive tactics. So that's gonna be useful. And we got Pedrero. Wow, that's a increase in a lot one in uh, defensive fire one in uh, defensive shock oh no so I'm mistaken it just looks so different um, relatively light cannons compared to the culverines using stone balls as ammunition due to their light weight in contrast to iron balls shit that must be horrible getting hit by a stone Oh, I, I don't want to even think about that. Okay, we managed to finish the production technology advance on the 19 quite fast as we're investing 300 per month. So, yeah, the technology level 20 is uh, a bit harder to research. It's, uh, it costs almost 5,000 now. But still, it should be relatively fast to do that one and our current production efficiency is 59% which is kinda good at least in my opinion when we're losing money for some reasons still? no good let's see how our new troops will deal with these two regiments of Moroccan nationalists although there's gonna be an automatic win so let's do it different though let's send just um, two North African musketeers to deal with that mind you I have zero investment in uh, morale or like 0 0.1 yeah 0 0.1 so they are actually in a huge disadvantage they, they still might and should win this even though they still look like they're carrying spears they should have uh, the upper hand in this yeah it's a huge difference we don't have a leader they do and we're still massacring them despite rolling less 
units or troops are quite superior. But I'm not really ready or willing to test them against Europeans. Okay, so it's 2nd of January 1600 and we decided to end it here. And this is the looks of Malve today. Oh, look at that! It's a huge filled blob. Yeah, I know. These two aren't really colonized. Uh, which one? Wait. Vordugu has just 98 uh, people in it and I need 196. But, you know, I wanted to reach the 1700s with a full, not, uh, full kingdom, full, full territory, not, not having a hole in it. It looks better this way. Also, we finally have musketeers, which is awesome, despite the fact that uh, I'm quite sad about the fact that it did not change the looks of our soldiers, but that's just a, you know, small thing. And we made a huge boost in a, with our economy. We're almost up to 300 of monthly income, which is nothing compared to Europeans, but still it's something. The inflation is down to point, uh, 0.3 and the income is down to 16.43. Also our presti prestige is finally on the rise. And this guy just won't die. He was 15 when he was inaugurated, I believe. So he is now 27 plus... well... Yeah, he's not all that bad. Not all that old, I meant. But still, you know, he's a deceitful fuck. And he ruins the expansion for us. Okay, anyways, uh, with this uh, picture I'm gonna end for today. And wish you all the best with a cup of tea in my hand. Join me next time for more... Molly.